going on, everybody? It's your buddy. It's Pass Max Phoenix, the YWC reality checking. You don't see my pretty sexy face, so you know I'm not alone. We're talking about NXT in a slightly different way, but it still means we got Jake DeMarco. What's going on, man? What's going on, buddy? I am excited to be here. I don't know much about what we're doing, and that's what makes it even more exciting and scintillating. Well, I've been saying, like, let's be real. Like, we've we've thrown some other videos together in the meantime, but for about a month now, I've I've said to you, hey, Jake, I have an idea for NXT. But I'm not going to tell you anything about it. I'm going to pitch it. I'm going to pitch it to you live in a podcast, and you can give me your reactions, right? Yeah, that's but, that's what I like. But for everybody that's listening and didn't know that this was was happening, um, you know, totally unapologetic NXT fan does not mean I don't think that there are some things that could be fixed with the company, unlike AEW fans. Let's be real. Um, over the course yeah, of the yeah, you can't criticize AEW. You know that. Do you want to be canceled? Come on. Oh, uh, my name's not Gina Carano. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you this? No, honestly, I've, I've noticed that, that NXT fans are more willing to accept criticism. That That is a fact I don't think anybody will argue with. But now that we're hearing NXT is essentially moving to Tuesdays, I'm very disheartened by all of this. Oh, they lost the war. and It, it shouldn't have been a war because NXT was already on Wednesdays to begin with. People seem to forget that. They don't remember that yep. NXT Especially... has been airing for years on Wednesdays, just not live. They, and then they decided they were going live on Wednesdays, and that's AEW. It was supposed to be Tuesday Night Dynamite for AEW. Tuesday Night Dynamite, that was the show. And then once NXT was going live, they went to Wednesdays. Now, it was also because of some sports stuff, but essentially they went ahead and you know pushed for Wednesdays with AEW as well. And also the fact that like it's especially great for me here in Canada because people are like, oh, well, you know, it doesn't count because it was on the network. And I'm like, let me tell you, in Canada and the UK and a bunch of other places, the WWE network is just another channel on our televisions. So it's been yeah, on TV for quite a while. You can't go and pick anything like you want. You have to watch whatever's on. So in the past year, because we are still in the COVID era, the ongoing global bastard is still very much a thing. A thing, rather. So you do have a lot of time to think. Uh, a little bit of a preview. I've got the notes set already for the next two series of podcasts that me and Jake are going to do, and I haven't even given him the notes yet. Um, yeah, but you do, you do get into conversations every here and there, because as soon as you criticize AEW, you get somebody with a criticism of NXT, and you start thinking about what you would do with your own brand. You know, oh, I would tweak this, or I would tweak this, or whatever. But I got enough of these ideas together that I completely shuffled the deck. I didn't change anything. I didn't take anything away from NXT, and I didn't add anything to NXT. I basically shuffled the deck of how we perceive NXT or how we receive NXT on a weekly basis. So this is sort of fantasy booking in its largest realm. Uh, what would I do with NXT if they handed it to me type of thing? First thing. I'm excited to hear first thing, and this is where I've, I've always said that NXT shouldn't leave Wednesday nights. Fuck that. We were here first. AEW can move. But my first concession in, in all of this is that it's not going to be on Wednesday nights anymore. But the second concession has to do with the title of this podcast. And Jake, I sent you the title of this podcast, and it was the only cue or clue I gave you before we started. And what does that clue say? Okay. What does that clue say, the clue that I sent you? Uh, I'm looking for... Where did you send it? Uh, Facebook Messenger. Okay. Okay, yep. Yeah. Cutting it in half. Yes, that's the clue. Don't mind, uh, you know, little old me who's just, just a little high, but, you know, I had to be here and stop the vomiting, so I had to make sure. I don't want to miss the episode. So you get, uh, uh, you know, my third eye is open. But yes, cutting it in half. Now, how do you propose we cut NXT in half? Okay. So if you're not going to be on Wednesday, you cut it down the middle. You have a show on Tuesday and a show on Thursday. Now, the problem with that is going to be people are going to say, oh, my God, that's too much wrestling in a week that's already got so much wrestling. Now, we are able, most of us, even though it's terrible, to sit through three hours of Rob when it's bad. Would you sit through three hours of NXT when it's good? Um, possibly. It's a, it's a trick question. It, it really, I, I was going to say probably not, because three hours I think is too much for anything, even if it's great. No, no, but the point of it is, uh, what have I said, though? I've cut yeah. it in half. Exactly. So what I've done is I've got a show on Tuesday and a show on Thursday... And they're, yes. nine, and they're 90 minutes 90 each. minutes. Now, that's fine. If it's good, it's 90 minutes. It's more digestible. 
That I would prefer. Okay, so now we got we got to brand the two shows. We have to distinctify the two shows, right? Distinctify is def- <laughs> definitely a word. So <laughs> distinctify the, the lady. They're, they're, and they're going to have two distinct identities as well. The one on Tuesday is going to be a slightly smaller show, and it's going to be called NXT Lights Out. And the show on like thir- the show on Thursday is going to be a little bit bigger. AEW Dark. A little bit. I mean, it, it, it is running on Tuesdays parallel to uh, Impact and running parallel to AEW Dark, but that's not a dig, I promise. <laughs> now, the other thing... I swear. Now, the other thing, historically, uh, with NXT is they've taken old, you know, WWE or WCW tropes and made them better. Halloween Havoc is a great example, right? So, NXT on Tuesdays is NXT... NXT Tuesday is Lights Out. NXT Thursdays is now NXT main event. Because no, we're going to go with Thunder. I like main event. NXT well it, it's going to we're going to get into the identity of the two shows in a second, but the the reason I'm doing that is because I want to treat NXT like it's the brand, not like it's the show. Like right now NXT is just the name of the show. I'm trying to differentiate NXT from the rest of WWE, treat it like its own company. And if you're doing that, then you have to have the company and then what the in- individual show is. So NXT isn't the name of a show anymore. So you got lights out, you got main event, both shows run 90 minutes. Now, what do you have to do with two shows? I'm not splitting into two rosters. We're not doing a Raw and SmackDown thing. But what I am doing is I'm giving two shows two distinct feels. Lights Out is the is the slightly smaller show. The sli- I don't want to say smaller. I want to say more intimate. And okay. main event is obviously the one that's a little bit more big, a little more bombastic. Etc. So can I give you what I'm thinking so far, just to, just so I keep up with you? Sure. Okay, so um, the Lights Out show is kind of your CWC home base. That's going to be your, not indie level, but, you know, when people are starting out, you're gonna that's more like your developmental of NXT? No, because that, anybody... No, you're just having the, anybody and everybody? The way I've laid this out is anybody can show up on either show. It's it's not okay. a divide. So it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's just two different brands like a Raw and SmackDown, but you're having one yes. be a more intimate setting and the other one be kind of like a larger arena atmosphere. Right. So for the moment, okay, until, until until we're able to tour, like say we're, we are eventually going to get crowds back in, but they're not able to tour per se just yet. So right now, for the sake of a little bit of difference, one's a little bit more intimate, one's a little bit more uh, bombastic and showy, whatever. Main event is going to take I, place. I, I wanted to qualify there, not clarify. Thanks to Braun, I wanted to qualify. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what I wanted to do is when it's available, NXT Lights Out is going to go back to the soundstage at Full Sail. NXT, oh, nice. NXT main event is going to stay in the CWC. Okay, so that gives it the live arena feel. Yeah, and I, I mean, like the C- even the CWC, when we're able to get more fans back in there, is going to seem bigger. Because we saw what they did, the one the one live NXT they did before COVID came in. It looked pretty damn good. It looked excellent, yeah. So I'm, I'm just going to go off of no Thunderdome. Just, just, I'm picturing the fans at this point. Yeah. Um, that kind of helps your your pitch go a little better. In my well, mind. my pitch is is in a world that doesn't have COVID, obviously. And now, even better. the one exception Why is Grey's Anatomy do that. The oh, do you want me to do you want me to really go on a Grey's Anatomy rant in the middle of an NXT podcast? Because <laughs> I will. That was a dumb move, and they're going to lose fans. Anyways, now the exception is, and this is where the AEW fans have to worry a little bit. When the shows are special, and we're going to limit it because it's only going to be four or five a year. Um, the go-home weeks, like the weeks leading into a takeover, uh, there's no lights out, there's no main event, there's one go-home episode of NXT, and that will be on a Wednesday. Ooh, that will, see, that's risky to move the shows different days. See, I, I'm, I'm only doing it in, t- in two senses. I'm doing it as go-home shows because the, I'm, the takeovers are still going to be collective. The takeovers are still going to be representative of the full brand. So I think the go-home show, to get into that feel, needs to do that. And just to keep the conversation going on the on the dirt sheets, I want to see if throwing one out every once in a while can show the competition a bit of a curve. You are right, because switching up the night is risky, but I do think it's worth it. Um, not to say... Because right now, look at Raw and SmackDown. Like, there's the go-home show for Raw, the go-home show for SmackDown. We really just look at SmackDown as the go-home show. Yeah, and exactly, Raw falls to the Raw wayside. doesn't get the final say, so none of their storylines get to feel that important. 
Yeah. So the only other time, and I'm limiting it to two. I'm limiting I'm limiting it to two what we've called elevated episodes of NXT, either Halloween Havoc or uh, Great American Bash, if they're going to do Great American Bash again, are the only okay. other uh, only other episodes that are going to be Wednesday night specials, like mi- mini pay-per-views as they're being treated. Okay, so keep them few and far between. Don't do as many as they did this past right. year. If there's a large... I like, prefer that. Like, we're going to do the special Wednesdays, and those are going to be regular two-hour episodes as we know them right now. Okay, and so to clarify one more time, so you're going to have every time there's a takeover, your go-home show for that is going to be replacing your Tuesday and Thursday show at a yep. combined two hours? Yes, because what it does not, is... Not, it, not a three-hour show to combine 90. No. no. Perfect. And I have a suggestion. I would say you have that Wednesday show always when it happens, because it's always going to be a one-off be the touring show, and have it in the arena that they're going to have the takeover in? If possible, yes. If possible, that, yes. You know, fuck because logistics. You're just you're fantasy booking anyways. But. Right. Oh, yeah. No, like like I said before, when I go to the Full Sail versus CWC, that's just my model until they can move again. Like, if I was going to say, um, if they were coming to Toronto, right, I would yeah. have them go, I would have... Um, Oh, what's it called now? It used to be called the Rico Coliseum. I would have main event in the Rico Coliseum in Toronto, and I would have lights out in the Don Kolov, which is where Destiny Wrestling happens. Check it off your Spanish Phoenix bucket list. That works out well. But, no, I I never... (laughs) Check that off. I never never want to overwhelm, and I never want to have a three-hour weekly show if you consider that takeovers aren't even three hours most of the time. Yeah, they're usually like two and a half, two forty. Yeah, and, and you, here's the thing, though. I, I think that would make it really exciting if you have a smaller arena. You know, like what Dynamite was using when they were touring initially. Mm-hmm. You know, they were getting like six, seven thousand. Typically, that was a great size audience, and you're getting really, really dedicated fans. You don't have any of that bloat that WWE had of like casuals going at that time. It was it was very you know niche and dedicated, especially for NXT. The, one of the loudest shows I ever went to, as as I always say, was the Takeover 25. Mm-hmm. Adam Cole's fans almost made me deaf at one point. It was insane. <laughs> Adam Cole tried really hard to remind you that he was the heel and failed. Yeah, no, he he could not not be over. It was incredible. So, but but honestly, to to have it have that that huge arena feel every time it's a go home show would give it that immediate importance. I think yep. that that would be massive as well. So you have that that's important, and now it's just a Wednesday show. They could do it, it, it if they had everything on the network. They could do whatever schedule they wanted. Raw, it's true. SmackDown, NXTs, like that's how it should be. And well, on, in, be in, in, in my plan, in my plan here, right? Like initially, one of the things I had in my notes up until, and this is going back a while, and something that happened just last week was, you know, Canada finally got on NXT on our channel on the proper night, not two weeks later in a condensed version. Fine. So one of the things I had to scratch out of my notes was to like make their t- uh, either make their TV. Uh, presence more robust or throw it back on the network for the places that don't have it because I'm sorry Sportsnet 360 giving it to a giving half the show to us two days later was no good but make sure wherever you're going that you know the the coverage is is robust because you got people that aren't going to be able to go if you're aiming for smaller venues there's going to be people in Toronto that didn't get a ticket for that that still want to have that you know that hometown feel like hey I'm not there but they are in my hometown type thing and the way I've set it out here anywhere NXT goes anywhere they sell tickets it's always going to be a package of two either you're getting a ticket for lights out and a ticket for main event or you're getting a ticket for a go home show and a pay per view. Like, you've got, either way, you've got yourself sort of a week to look forward to, and it's not just a one and done. And I did that intentionally, like, uh, pairing the weekly shows and pairing the pay-per-views with the main events. Or, sorry, the pay-per-views with the go-home shows. I love that idea. Now! You you brought up the four-pack beforehand, and I said how much fun that was, you know? Well, yeah, like, when you, when, as as WWE as a whole, um, we talked about when I... Uh, I saw SummerSlam where The Fiend debuted, and I got to see that, and I got to see The Takeover, and unfortunately I had to put up with the, res- with the return of uh, Sasha Banks, and I got to see a half-empty SmackDown. But you think about it nowadays, <laughs> like, Carbs. I mean, if the rumors are true, we're going to still be able to do that. You'll get The Takeover, whatever the regular pay-per-view is, the Raw and the NXT. So... It seems like we're going down a very similar route, and if you want to get a ticket for the Friday show as well, that's a five-day deal instead of a four-day deal. 
it really does make you wonder where they're going to throw the Hall of Fame, but that's another conversation for another day. I, I, I've heard that they might not even do the Hall of Fame. It was going to be virtual, and they weren't going to do it again. And I, I don't oh, know I just mean like when, when the world is sort of back to normal and people actually want to buy tickets oh, and stuff. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying, but I'm saying at this point in time, legitimately, like back to the real world, I, I have no idea. Okay, so I told you that it's still going to be one roster. We are not cutting the roster in half, right? So anybody theoretically can show up on any show, but the focuses of the two shows are going to be different. Now, proper NXT, NXT main event, whatever you want to call the Thursday show, which is basically going to be the transplanted version of what we get now. It's obviously going to focus on the main men's title. It's going to focus on the main women's title. And it's going to focus on the tag team titles or the or the scenes surrounding those titles. Now, the first two are obvious. Like, the, obviously, the main men's title is going to be on the main show. The main women's title is going to be on the main show. The main women's title could main event that show most weeks. I think you and I can agree on that. The reason I throw the tag t- division on that show as well is because it's a conscious effort to elevate that division because we all know that that's where NXT falls down is in their tag team divisions. Yeah, sadly. And we've known that for quite some time now. But now there's Try a, not to cry. It's so painful. There's a now there's a twofold thing to go on here. Uh, yeah. ob- obviously there's a big uh, there's a big case to be made for WWE using more factions because then you can integrate tag team wrestling with singles wrestling and all that sort of thing. I would go out of my way to once the borders are open again, I would go out of my way to include uh, tag teams from the UK because they do have great tag teams in the UK. They have Gallus, they have Mustache Mountain, they have uh, Flash Morgan Webster and uh, Mark Andrews. Uh, they have the new NXT UK tag team champions, Pretty Deadly, who I haven't seen very much of, but they're they they seem to be all right. They have uh, Wild Boar and Primate, who are hilarious and fun. Uh, you could get Dave Mastiff in there and let him tag team with literally anybody. I'd love a tag team of Dave Mastiff and Killian Dane, if I'm honest. Yeah, so, holy hell, talk about monsters tearing through everybody. Uh, well, it's very much like, I don't know how much impact you've watched recently, but I see Triple XL, and I go over into NXT, and I'm like, who who could be my really, really violent version of Triple XL? It would be Dave Mastiff and Killian Dane. No offense, yeah, to, no offense to Drake Maverick, obviously. So that would be a twofold thing. Keep the, obviously, the... It, it sort of has to go hand in hand. It's the main show. It's going to have the two main titles on it. Throw the tag titles on there, which are sort of your weakest division, and make them live up to the main show like moniker. But also bring in the tag teams from the other NXT where they are putting a pretty heavy focus, from what I can tell, on that division. And I mean, we do have teams. They just need stuff to do. Like they just did, they just did a Dusty Classic without having to throw too many random teams together. So the teams yeah, for the are the part they they managed to do it without having to have all those makeshift teams. Yeah, you're right. So now, like like we've said, uh, the men's uh, men's main card is always somewhat interesting. I mean, you look at some of the names you've got in there. You can throw Champa in there at any time. But well, right really now, quick too, before you start listing names, I, I, one of the things I hope that they could bring back personally is, is managers again. I, I I really enjoy a good wrestling manager and one of the ones that i really loved in nxt was Zelina vega she was so good with andrade she was fierce she was threatening she was a, a real worry that you had to always be cognitive of to know like oh my god where is she in relation to my match because she can hurt her on my ass and, and really cost me this title match and, and she was good on the mic she was intimidating you know she and he backed up everything that she said so it worked you know that there's been quite, even Alexa Bliss was a good manager, uh, AOPs, you know things like that. But so I yep. always like a good wrestling manager, and I feel like we don't have much of that at this time. So that'd be cool to bring back some of that as well. Um, it's no, it's some the, good tag teams, good some managers, more factions. Like you said, this could lead to a lot of positive changes. It's 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 nowhere near where it could be. Uh, but I do think we are starting, and I think they're starting it subtly and slowly and not making a really big deal out of it, because they're doing it on all levels. Like, in the mid-card, you've got Malcolm Bivens with, with Tyler Rust, which is helping, because Tyler Rust isn't great on the mic, but he's great in the ring. No. Yeah, um, that's, that's the start of something. Sure. I, you know what? I'm really excited about watching him in the ring, because, like, he might not be cutting the promos, but Bivens is there pumping him up, and there's this whole story about, like, him hunting down new opponents that he thinks he can beat. 
and that's fun. Um, people shit on the uh, what's his name Robert Stone brand thing, but like it's it's a low it's a bottom of the card act that knows exactly what it is, and there's something to be said for that. Yeah, and he worked hard at his role, so. And I mean, it's 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 very different because she's not a manager; she's more of a valet. But obviously, Scarlet and uh, Carrie and Cross are a, are a package deal. You don't think of her as like a quote unquote manager, but it is like she's part of the package, and it's and it's good. There could be more. What I will say, and AEW gets a lot of credit because they are utilizing the legends properly. Except, you know, Tully Blanchard's going to have a, a match this week. It's fine. Um, but I feel like there's so many managers on, on, uh, AEW, cause you've got Taz, you've got Sting, kind of, you've got Blanchard, you've got, um, uh, what's his name? Jake the Snake. Um, I think they run yeah. the risk of having so many managers that the idea of having a manager itself is no longer a unique concept. So I, in, in, as far as making sure that doesn't happen, I, I'm, I'm rather, I'd rather they have... I'm better off with them having maybe not enough than overdoing it, but it it, yeah, it, it is a valid point. Many, but I feel like there's hardly anything going on really now in NXT, so I'd like to see that be focused or increased at least a little bit more. Okay. I think it could be interesting, but all in all, so how are you going to work out the rosters? That's what I'm curious. I'm working That's out the, the ro- I'm keeping player. I'm keeping the rosters fluid, and I'm going to get to that. Um, uh, where, where I'm going to describe what lights out is going to be like, and then I'm going to tell you how sort of how the two of them are going to relate a little bit. Okay. Because okay. what I've what I've done there is you'll notice I haven't said anybody specifically. I'm just going to say the 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 focus of main event is going to be the main the main title pitcher, the tag team title pitcher, and anybody can sort of flow in and out of of whatever pitcher they're in. I mean, you can graduate from being a tag team wrestler to a singles wrestler, or you can have a mixed tag with somebody. And like, I think the way my shows are working, or the way I would have it work can reflect that like you don't get set in stone in one slot and then you're here because you're this now lights out on the other hand is the show honestly that's going to be more intriguing for me if it happened um we're going to have focus on the north american title obviously but that makes sense but i'm going to sort of treat this the way wwe used to treat house shows because intercontinental championship if you believe wrestling lore Intercontinental Championship was created so that they could do two house shows in a night, and both house shows could have a champion, right? So, obviously, the NXT champion is going to be the main star of NXT main event. I'm going to, as much as I can, elevate the North American title so that it is the main title, or the main focus of this show, so that it, it still has its place as sort of the secondary championship but it is still treated as a main event concern if that makes sense it does make sense so right now if you just look at the two shows um i mean what about the women's title is that also going to be or is that on the the thursday show no the the women's championship the one that's held right now by io shirai yes would would be on main event now but if you look at the two shows simultaneously, think about the acts associated with them. Now, Finn Balor is is a solo act, but if you think about how he's sort of intertwined right now with the Undisputed Era storyline. Now, so picture, basically, as far as storyline, The Way heads up one entire show, the breakup of the Undisputed Era headlines the other entire show. Because those two stories are pretty huge. And the fact that they're trying to coexist on the same show right now, I legitimately find to be a problem sometimes. Yeah, But the, pers- the personalities involved with Gargano and his group could be the main factor of a show. And obviously, everybody involved in the Undisputed Era, plus Finn Balor and everybody else involved in that, is enough to be the whole story of another show. So, simply by having those two titles on two different shows, you bring two completely main event concerns to their to their respective main event slots. Now, we're going to, on NXT Lights Out, put more focus than NXT already does have on the Cruiserweight title. And once again, this is where I'm going to pull in a little bit from the UK, because right now the UK has had their own Cruiserweight champion in Jordan Devlin. So there's uh, opportunity for a little bit of a crossover there. But this will also signify the end of 205 Live. 
Oh, okay. This will signify the end of 205 Live uh, because it gets rid of the, the last thing on, N- on NXT that's a little bit muddy. Because right now, yeah, it's the NXT Cruiserweight Championship, but eh, some stuff happens on NXT, some stuff happens on 205. I, I know a while ago they even did a couple uh, Cruiserweight matches on main event. And yeah. it's sort of like you're you're following NXT because you're you know you're a rabid NXT fan like I am, but even I don't watch uh, 205 Live. It took the Dusty Classic matches on 205 Live for me to watch it. Exactly, and I went ahead and uh, you know started <laughs> off watching 205 Live and and then just faded away with it. But yeah, because it feels it was like fun initially. Neville was a great champion. I liked Enzo obviously for different reasons. It wasn't oh, yeah. an athletic thing with him, but. Glad to see they're back, too. That was a pretty happy and emotional thing that worked out to see them return. So It's good to just see like the good shit that's going on with Cass and that he's sort of yeah, turned his situation around. But I think sober. But I think if there's anything on NXT that could be considered muddy, it's the fact that the Cruiserweight Championship was adopted by NXT, but it still kind of happens elsewhere as well, so you could always miss something. So get rid of 205 Live. Nobody's watching it anyway. Nobody will miss it. Sort yeah. of... Like, don't do uh, a heavy, heavy NXT versus NXT UK thing, but acknowledge that there is another cruiserweight roster out there. Um, put a bigger focus. At least you know now, like, hey, if we ever need to, we could just pull someone from the UK side as a, as a credible champion challenger. Idea. Well, they, well, well, they do have to do the undisputed match between uh, Escobar and Devlin at some point. But until yeah. until then, milk the fact that you've got two cruiserweight divisions. But my my bigger concern. That's what I'm saying, and, and you can you can beg, borrow, and steal from both of them. Is what I'm saying too. So it kind of yes. works out where you always have a fresh face going to, to both sides. Well, when you get crowds into the UK show, the UK show needs a bit of a boost as well. But I didn't even include that on here. No, no, but it's just logical that you would you would go both ways with that. You know, you you could send one of your top, you know, your number one contender over for a couple of matches and have theirs come over. You know what I mean? Beg, borrow, steal. It works when it's beneficial for both sides. Abs- absolutely. Uh, the problem that I have here, and the, the the fine line that I have to walk here, is I really want to put a uh, highlight on the cruiserweight division, not just as hey, here's another division we have to pay attention to, but like th- you're going to get something a little different from these guys. It's not just more WWE wrestling from smaller guys or more WWE wrestling from faster guys. You gotta really it's put a some, style of their own. Yeah, you, you really got to put some effort into saying that like we have an extra title because this is a different kind of wrestling. Now, I have to walk the line between that and not completely putting them on an island. You and I talked recently about how good Escobar and Cross was in the sense that it showed that cruiserweights were part of the roster. They didn't live on an island. So you need to show how special they are, but at the same time um, show that they are a part of the rest of the roster as well and they don't live in a bubble, which is why I'm going to have at least an implied sense of rivalry between the cruiserweight division and the North American division. Now, if you've got somebody like a Johnny Gargano who is a cruiserweight and he wants to, you know, go face to face with whoever the cruiserweight champion, like right now, just for the hell of it, have them both stand in the ring, holding their belts up in the air, Johnny Gargano versus Santos Escobar. Are you going to complain? Okay. I think, I think those two. I don't think I would complain. I think I would be very happy, but yeah. Uh, I, well, I think it's, it's, because they're both, as I say, we're going to treat the North American Championship like the main title on this show. But realistically speaking, on the other side of the coin, the North American title is a mid-card title, and so is the Cruiserweight title. So Santos Escobar stepping up to Johnny Gargano in that title versus title. Because title versus title will always sell a marquee, or it will always sell a pay-per-view. It'll, you know, Two guys holding two belts is always going to be a visual thing. But I think that's a little bit more... Um, Face to face, then say Grand Metalik picks up the cruiserweight championship and decides, okay, cool, I'm gonna go face Pete Dunne, who if he happened to be the NXT champion, uh, I think because they're both they're both the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're the two mid card titles. There would be yeah. al- almost a sibling rivalry between the two of them. Not necessarily that they don't like each other because they are the respective champions, but, like, they're the siblings, whereas they both look up at the top guy and see that the top guy is still the top guy. Kind of like uh, NXT UK and NXT, other than one pay-per-view that you and I previewed and enjoyed. Um, yeah. They've never really been direct rivalries. They've always been referred to as sort of sister brands. Uh, the Cruiserweight Championship and the North American Championship on Lights Out would sort of be, like, sister titles. 
but families fight <laughs> type of thing. And I mean, look at it again, uh, just with the current title holders, you could do a whole bunch of shit just with Legato del Fantasma and the way. Like, just the storytelling yeah, possibilities are there. And like I say, if you want to integrate some, some teams over from the UK as well. Now, the other half of the NXT Lights Out thing that's going to be incredibly special is you and I recently did a really deep dive on the women's division of NXT. We had a lot of fun doing that. Absolutely. We, def- we definitely agree that there is an, enough women in this company that there is an established main event tier and an established strong mid-card tier, right? Yeah. So and you this... can have some minor comedy wrestlers and yep. some of the lower end that could be jobbers and some people that are on their way up and up. And oh, yeah. There's a, there's a lot to it. And here's the thing. I'm shocked that you didn't tell me that, you know, Tuesday was the female show and Thursday was the men's show. Like, I, I was kind of expecting from you See, I don't... to have the women have their own show. I don't want to do that. <laughs> You've never really been for that. You've never. I've you, never been for that. Integrate the two, but I've I'm never been for that because to, being such a fan of the women's roster. Because dividing the shows by something like, by something like gender doesn't allow for any fluidity. Like you don't have any cooperative action between the two, and you don't have any competitive action between the two because WWE WWE is never going to do make or uh, intergender wrestling properly. Plus, I you you go one of two ways with it. I mean. Check it out. We made an entire show just for the cruiserweight division, and who watches it? Um, not to That's say that... exactly why I used to tout and be all about a women-only show. Yeah, I. But then I, after really, you know, and it wasn't like a virtue signal thing by any means. The no, thought. like I was genuinely excited for the after the the Revolution pay per view. I was so stoked for the women's division on the main roster because that was my favorite pay per view of that entire year. Was it 2018? Oh it yeah, Evolution. It. Yeah. Um, that was such a great show, in part because of NXT being involved. So they did a fantastic job. Such a great show. Now, here's the problem. Like you said, if you have the women just be there, what do you get? You get people like, uh, you know, the Cornette side that, that don't care for one star or other, so they'll tune out entirely and won't watch any of the women now, and no one gets seen. As where if you keep it together, they have a better chance of being viewed. So it wasn't a great idea, but... I was just, you know, at least you were more well thought out than I had been previously. See, my thought on it is is a lot simpler too, right? Because you can go one of two ways. If you put all the women on one show, you're either saying that they're good enough to have their own show or they're not good enough to be on the show. And I would never want the second of those examples to be the idea that goes out. But also, selfishly, because I think the women's division is the best thing going in NXT right now, I don't want either show to be without that women's division, to be perfectly honest with you. But where it's going to get more exciting for me on Lights Out is we're going to focus specifically on the women's undercard in two ways. When, I'm going to say when because it should happen, when Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez capture those women's tag team championships this Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow night. Those the, the All the focus around those titles will happen on NXT Lights Out, because the tag titles are mid-card titles at the end of the day, even though they're great. But, Makes at least... But at That's least, what I want. I want them to win those titles. But at least right now, those are not... They won't automatically become NXT titles when they come down, because they are the, the belts that float around all three brands, so they won't always be in NXT. So what else do we have for the NXT women's mid-card I was watching NXT Arrival over the weekend. You know this. We talked about this before we came on the air. You know what I saw? I saw Paige versus Emma. And the old... Ooh, such a classic. And the old NXT Women's Championship. Now, think about it for a second. Compared to the new belt, look at the old belt. A little bit smaller, a little bit simpler, and it's silver instead of gold. Do you know what that says to me? Mid-card championship. And that's kind of how it was viewed and, and treated for quite some time. So what I'm saying, that's though... That's how Paige treated it with her boyfriends. Oh, I wasn't going to go there because she's been through enough. What I'm <laughs> saying is, uh, kind of like Moose uh, in, in, in uh, Impact right now has the old TNA championship, but it's not the recognized world title, right? I'm going to bring back that belt that Paige had that all the initial uh, women's champions had 
it is going to be the mid-card title of my NXT Women's Division. It's going to be called the NXT Legacy Championship, and that's what the women in the mid-card are going to fight for on NXT Lights Out. Do we it, have to bring back that specific title, or can we make a new one that's clean? Replica of the same belt. I, I, I want, okay, the, I want, I want, I want the leg. I want the legacy thing to actually mean because it, it I goes. I don't want anybody to sit on it and accidentally get pregnant. Oh, There's Jesus a lot of Christ. risks and liability with this. <laughs> no, the thing. reason the reason I want it to be that belt specifically is a couple of reasons. Like, there's a big. It's a gorgeous belt. First of all, it's a gorgeous belt, but I think there's a lot of symbolism that goes along with it as well. The, I mean, the women's division on Raw and SmackDown is hit and miss at the best of times now, but it is still as bad as it is right now. It's better than it's ever been in WWE history. Because they had the Divas Revolution, the Evolution, whatever, which started in NXT, right? Yes. Now, a lot of people give the credit to that movement, to the Four Horsewomen, which is obviously a thing. That movement started for me as soon as the very first NXT Women's Champion was crowned. And that was that match, the original match between Paige and Emma. The original match between Paige and Emma was fought for that specific belt. So if you're going to have a legacy belt, you need a belt from when that started. So there's That's your. That's a great point. You got me there. So there's your there's your legacy, and like I say, uh, if they're mid card, if they're designated sort of mid card wrestler, you look at obviously I'm gonna go to Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon, like they can sort of move fluidly between trying for the tag titles or trying to make some single strides for that title. I think you put that legacy championship on somebody like an Ember Moon. Or let Ember Moon and Shotzi fight over it. Or you put it on somebody somebody like a Tegan Knox, Like an, uh, an emotional fan favorite like Tegan Knox, And let her carry it for a little while. And then develop a, uh, an undercard heel to go for it. You've got, you've got a legitimate mid-card women's championship for the first time in WWE history. I mean, that, that really is a great idea. Damn, you, you kind of uh, <laughs> covered every aspect there. I, I can't argue with any of it. You thought about the full lineage, the symbolism... It has character, it's it's defining, has a true purpose, and a, a calling for each wrestler to hold something and be purposeful in between. They get a title to fight for, so not only are they elevating themselves in the promotion, but they're they're preparing themselves to go after the, the, the main belt, which then they can go to the main roster, and in our you know, fantasy book mind, the main roster would be a promotion, not a not a you know, devaluing of said star, so the other half of it being as well is if you designate Lights Out as sort of your mid-card focus for the women's division, uh, obviously the women from the mid-card are going to be the ones that go for that tag title. And because it's a cross-brand championship, anytime you do bring it to NXT, it's going to be counted as a victory for NXT. So if you have that little extra feather in your cap, I want it to happen on the smaller show. I want it to happen with the mid-card characters because whoever's in the main event situation is already in the main event situation and they don't need that feather in their cap. Now. Yeah, that's true. I mean, so those that need the recognition get it. Now, the last thing that we're going to do, I've told you about all the ways that the shows are going to be different. Now I'm going to bring in one thing that's going to tie both of the shows together. We uh, we liked the Cruiserweight Classic, yes? Absolutely. We liked the Mae Young Classic, yes? Absolutely. We like the Dusty Classic, yes? Absolutely as well. We think the Women's Dusty Classic was pretty damn good this year. Yes? <laughs> that it was. It was excellent. NXT manages to pull off some decent tournaments is what I'm saying. I think... I get, I get what you're going for here. I think you have a rotating schedule of tournaments. And it's specifically... Because you don't need anything extra leading up into WrestleMania season. Right? You don't. And you don't really need anything towards the tail end of the year because anything's winding down. But you do have yeah, that, and, and you have things beforehand that work that would fill up the gaps. So yeah, yeah, that works well. So what you do have though is the middle, the middle of the year, the summer when everybody's out having a good time, and everybody wants to go out to all the shows they can possibly get to. It's that big gap between WrestleMania and SummerSlam, hmm. right? That's so you, perfect. Yeah. So you rotate the because tournaments. That's, that's usually one of the, the the lulls is that, and then from SummerSlam. Until before they start building for Survivor Series with War Games, there's usually a lull there too. No, see, I'm I'm only going for the one. I'm I'm keep I'm keeping this last idea sort of minimal. No, no, I, uh, I'm not saying when you go yeah. for. I'm just saying those are the two like big lull periods in creative. It seems okay. usually. So what I'm going to do every year, 
for uh, in the gap between WrestleMania season and SummerSlam season, I'm going to have a tournament. Uh, we're going to fill it to the brim so that it can last that long and it won't be over in just a couple of weeks. So no like little eight person or 16 person tournaments. I'm going for like 32 or above. One year, that gap. Yeah. One year that gap gets a May Young Classic. The next year, Perfect. the next year, they get a CWC. The next year they get a men's Dusty. The next year they get a women's Dusty. That way you know there's always something in that gap, but they never overlap, which is the only problem I had this year with them doing the men's and women's Dusty at the same time. Yeah, it just felt like too much. You didn't get neither one felt special because neither one. They weren't really like trying to outdo each other, but that's the sense you get. And, and I know competition in house is good at times, but that's not how it felt. It, 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 neither one of them really got that time to feel like, oh, they're super celebration and, and you know, like oh, they earned it. They, you know, it just was. It was such a quick thing. So I, I felt like more could have been put into it, and it could have had more of an importance in their victory. And I think also at the same time, you could you putting them side by side didn't do them any favors because one. Uh, tournament had 16 teams and the other te- tournament only had eight. So yeah, no just doubt. even putting them side by side, it meant that every week, like the men's tournament got two matches, the women's tournament got one. And it's like, if you're trying to find equal footing, then you have to equal it out. But if you're only doing one tournament at a time, you don't have to worry about it. So like I say, exactly. So like I say, uh, you got a big long thing. And the reason I say this is going to tie both shows together is you're going to space out the tournament well enough um, that you only do two matches a week. One tournament match happens on Tuesday, one tournament match happens on Thursday every week. That way you're not overwhelmed with the tournament, and that way you've got one thing that's tying both shows together to show that NXT is still one brand. It's just spread out over two nights. But it means the following year you're not just getting the same thing again. It's a big difference yeah. from going from tag team wrestling, you know, tag team wrestling in 2021 to more women in 2022 into, you know, some more cruiserweights in 2023, but then we're going to come back around in four years, and you know what? We're going to have another Dusty Cup. But it keeps it fresh, and it always makes sure that that sag in the middle of the year is filled, and it means by the time that we get to SummerSlam, or at least SummerSlam adjacent pay-per-views, that we've had at least one story on the brand that's built for a couple of months. Yeah, which which is very helpful, and you would keep the takeover schedule the same. I would keep it the same, maybe like because they used to be, they used to be attached to the big four WWE pay per views, right? Yeah, um, they're not anymore. So I would say maybe go from four to six, but no more. Okay, so you might increase, but you wouldn't take away. Yeah, I I, I agree, and I wouldn't add more than six. I, I especially having the you know the three special events that you're planning. Yep. Which was Halloween Havoc, Great American Bash, and which else? Oh, I was I was just saying like two two other specials. Uh, okay. So so if you oh you're talking about the the Wednesday night thing that the Wednesday yeah. night exceptions. So the if we if we had having, so if, takeovers. So if we had six takeovers, there'd be six Wednesdays that were go homes to takeovers, right? Yeah. And throw in two extra ones. I would say Halloween Havoc and whatever else you want. So then you get eight Wednesdays. And That's the rest, perfect. and the rest of the time, AEW can run wild on Wednesday nights. It's fine. I'm, I'm a magnanimous person like that. But um, and that could, that could elevate the audience too, because now they know, like, oh crap, it's only a Wednesday when it's something special. It's a big deal. It's in front of a larger crowd, as we established, and we know both, both sides of the roster are going to be showing up, even though it is fluid, like you said, and it connects. They still have that ability to, to see everyone on one night that they want to. You know, everyone that's going to be at the takeover. Yeah. So that certainly builds nicely. And the fun thing is, uh, going back to the tournaments again, is because we're going to have, um, like I said, we're going to have one tournament match on each of the shows every week. Now, leading up into it, if there's a takeover that happens before SummerSlam season, you could just have a really good match from that tournament on the takeover. And get, if yeah. those are two people you want to focus on going forward, after the, or two teams or two cruiserweights or whatever that you want to, you know, you want to focus on after the tournament, but they're not necessarily w- winning. Give them some like much needed early takeover exposure. Give them five minutes. Let them say like for people that don't know who we are, here's who the hell we are. You know, look look for us when we make our actual debuts later on. Yeah, exactly. And it and it would also prove like if there was a takeover dropped right in the, like we say between WrestleMania and SummerSlam, if there was a takeover dropped in the middle and you didn't rush to do your your 
uh, finals then, if you just kept on going afterwards, it would sort of get rid of that fear that some wrestling fans have that, oh, WWE is just going to rush something because they have to throw it on the next pay-per-view. It's like, no, you can have something that stretches past one pay-per-view gap. Yeah. Yeah. And they can make it work that way. So, But I really do think rotating through those four. I don't think you really need to do, like, a main event men's tournament. Like, because that's basically King of the Ring. But, I mean, uh, yeah. the Cruiserweight division <laughs> needs bolstering. The women's division, I wouldn't say the women's division needs bolstering. But it could always take more more people. Um, tag, it doesn't hurt. The tag division, uh, we, we've always talked about, is in, is, is in perpetual trouble. Uh, and if they are going to put more focus on the women's tag team division, I could say the same thing for that as well, because my favorite team in that tournament, and they should have won, was a thrown-together tag team. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Anyways, the so the tournament bit of that was the capper for this. This is if Spaz ran NXT. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't have a, a, a clever closing thing for this. I, I just like well, that. You know what? Like I said, I've, I've kind of instead of having like a, a summation of closing, like uh, you know, criticizing what I or my my ultimate feedback. I've been, I've been giving you what I am interpreting as we go, but giving this a, a full take. Um, you sold me on the Wednesday idea. I originally heard it and I was like, Nah, I, I can't go with that. And then the more you explained it, I said, You know what? And then you kind of gave me my little caveat which is the only thing i would have had a hard time with uh i would want it to feel bigger each time so i I like the arena idea you agreed with that i think that's spot on for you know that type of wednesday show but yeah badass idea all the way through and through more people get seen because you're giving essentially an extra hour of television but you're cutting back an hour and a half you know so so everybody gets more chances to shine you got an extra title in there in the women's mid card you know, now we're going to focus more on the cruiserweight as well. Both sides get to have their their feuds, and really just go ahead and it's just it's impressive. It's it's really well thought out, and I appreciate how much effort you put into this. I think that I hope I pray somebody in the right place hears this and takes at least one of the pieces of advice to heart because it, we love NXT. Yep. And the thing I, is, we like, do. That's, that's what it comes down to, and it, and it hasn't been as great as it once was. It's still very good, but they have amazing talent, and the stories could be so much better. They just, they just need a little bit of help in some directions, and they're getting there with some of the things. I think they, if they stop focusing on AEW and go ahead and and just go into, you know, focus on their their straight up mindset of, hey, we're going to worry about ourselves, and we're going to focus on what we're doing. That's it. Yep. Perfect. And the, Once and they like, started worrying about countering AEW and, oh, they're having their fighter fest, well, we need Great American Bash, and now we got to have Velveteen Dream and Adam Cole in a parking lot because they had a parking lot brawl. And, you know, <laughs> it, it just it became tit for tat, and it really ruined NXT for a while. It did. Yeah, but you know what it is, though? Like, I am, like, one of the main reasons I felt comfortable, like, okay, this is, I'm taking a show from two hours to three hours, but I'm also cutting it in half and spreading it out over two different days. I am one of the few people who genuinely believes not the not the individual stars, not the individual matches per se, but I like the presentation of NXT since it's gone to TV. I don't I'm not saying I like it being on TV, but I think since it went live, since it went to 2 hours, it has allowed a lot of the smaller card stuff like I don't think you would have had an such an immediate platform for comedy characters or or gimmicky characters as much. Like, I don't think we would have been given, like, an extra minute or so on TV to get out Shotzi's tank, or I don't think you would have had, you know, the Cameron Grimes thinks he's the million dollar man stuff. I think they've spread their... I don't think uh, if they kept to a one-hour show that we would have adopted the Cruiserweight title, for sure. Because if you think back before then, we already had the North American and the UK title at the time. So I think expanding it, putting it on regular TV, getting more eyes on it, or at least potentially more eyes on it, made it better. And I think giving more, but in bite-sized chunks that actually feel like you're watching less, is the compromise overall. And I will say, uh, I did steal that from Paul Heyman, who has said in multiple interviews, the optimal time for a wrestling show is 90 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, 90 minutes is the most optimal time, and he's right. No doubt about it. Yeah. The one, the one thing that was the most important about about all this is the way I've set this out is is just I've I didn't want it to be Raw and SmackDown. 
I didn't want it to be, oh, uh, you know, Gargano's a main event guy and, and Balor's a, a lights out guy. Like, the focuses on the shows are different, but the things stay fluid. I mean, Johnny Gargano's the the North American champion, but he's not going to be kept away from his wife if she becomes the women's champion. Like, <laughs> like all, all the all the pitfalls that we see on the main roster. So, and it gives everybody an opportunity. Like, if somebody's a tag team champion and then they lose their title and decide they want to go for the North American title, they're going to be probably showing up on Lights Out and vice versa. If you have factions that pick up titles, those factions are going to go on both shows. Now, uh, if uh, the North American, or sorry, if the Undisputed Era were still on their reign of terror. Two of those titles are what I have put on main event, and one title is on Lights Out. So you could have Undisputed Era show up on both shows. You could have Undisputed Era ruling the roost on one show and The Way ruling the roost on the other show, like I said initially. Yeah, exactly. um, the one thing that I wanted to do here and stay away from is what WWE does on the main roster is they try to make what they come up with this brand new rule or this thing that they like, and they try to carve that rule in stone right away. And then they write themselves into a corner. I'm trying to do the opposite of that with this while making sure all the different parts of the roster, uh, get equal time and equal thing. And like I say, um, it was sort of a, a last ditch thing, uh, that on lights out the NXT women's legacy championship. But I do think, I do think with all the talk that we've had about the NXT women's division, like a mid card singles title is overdue. And I just like the idea of the legacy title, bringing back the other belt, sort of washing away all the stupid shit. Like I'm not aiming this at you, obviously, but all the stupid shit that yeah. goes along with, uh, you know, Paige and what happened with that belt and the, sh the shit that people think are like legitimately like mock, we're, like we're having a good time. We're taking a bit of the yeah, piss, right? Yeah, we're joking, but... But, like, the way some people are... I would be are, excited to see that belt return. Yeah. But, I mean, like, the way some people are legitimately is the way we would joke about it. And I think it is a bit shit. Like... It is shit. I, ho I hope people wouldn't je legitimately be like that. Like, I was being a condescending asshole. Yeah. Just joking in the moment because you weren't going to go there. That was... I was trying to pull yeah. it off of you, but... <laughs> You know that was you were being the straight man, so I was trying to be the the ass, yeah. and that was the fun part. Oh no, it. and 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 the the, fun, the I have to be careful with that too because I'm a jackass about yeah. a lot of stuff. But I well, I, we're equally sarcastic. Yeah, so. I have to hope that there aren't people out there that are seriously as shitty as I pretend to be. But on, can you imagine? Or like, even if they had, uh, even if it wasn't the same belt, like I know Tennille Dashwood is in in Impact now, but I'm sure they could lend her over for a night. Have Tennille Dashwood and Paige, who were the very first ones that fought for that belt in the initial championship match, be the one to present the inaugural holder of the women's legacy title. Like, Imagine we, Paige being able to return to the ring to defend that belt. I, w I would love that, too. I, I really, really would. But, I mean, she wouldn't be considered a mid-carder at this stage, though. No, but, like, but to, to set that belt off as a, yeah. as a hell of a presence and make it mean something, she's the initial champ that has to That's have true. the belt taken away from her like oh my yeah. god I do, I but I, I do i do think you i just want to see her wrestle again that's what it comes down to. oh it's, if we're, if it's we're true fantasy booking I'm it's true sign me up oh for, for sure more page but i'm thinking like okay heart with her with her spine being the way it is i mean that's that's yeah. how my neck is I, I know exactly what she goes through yeah. it's awful and, and you and you don't look as good in black no i don't <laughs> or naked a lot of skin but <laughs> I'm going to leave that one where it is. But I'm just saying, like, if I want to... You're talking about your fantasy booking. If I want to talk about my fantasy booking for just a second, my girl Shotzi yeah. Blackheart needs a title, right? If, mm, if, if Shotzi that Blackheart... That title screaming uh, defeat Paige. Yeah, or... But I'm just saying, like, if they don't do what you're saying, if it's just who's there right now, throw in... Throw in Shotzi, throw in, you know, Dakota Kai, Tegan Knox. Have, have, um, you know... Get in your Catanzaros and who your would you have? Who would who would be your two number one contenders? Shotzi and who for that that mid card belt? In the who what? A, 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 as, booking, so as the final for, as a final as for like a finals, mini term? Yep. I would have face versus face. You know, to totally like respect based handshake the whole deal. Shotzi Ooh, Blackheart and Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox. Damn! Sign me up. You just sold me on that one even more. You get, you get, but here, but here's where I think, and here's where I get really sappy with wrestling, right? You get Emma and Paige there. One of them 
may, maybe you don't have both of them present, but you have one of them sort of announce the match, like call, uh, like do the ring call for that match, and the other mm-hmm. one gets to present it. Like maybe maybe Emma, because she lost the initial match, she could do like the ring calling because she was still in that match, and Paige being the one that won it the first time can do the presentation at the end. Yeah, because I think she's the former champion there, you know, the initial. I think there's so, yeah, like, there's so much you can do it. with that. There's so much you could do. There's so many people that are like. You know, on the main roster, we we t- we look at somebody who's not quite main event, and you say, "Oh, like they're mid card for life." Like me, I wasn't particularly a fan of Kofi Kingston being the WWE champion because I think he's a strong mid carder, and people took that as an insult. But there are some strong ass mid carders in that women's division on NXT. No doubt about it. And I would I would almost rather, and like I say, I'm always going to go to Shotzi because my biases are what they are. I would almost rather see her pick up that belt first. Honestly, I I would. I would too. Yeah, that would be great to see her have that mid card title first. This is this is way too fun. And on, honestly, on the men's side, I'm just looking at the, the the current champions and the factions that are surrounding them. Imagine Undisputed Era versus Legato del Fantasma versus the Way intertwining the Cruiserweight North American and NXT. Champ. Like, there's so much fuckery you can do, and I mean. Three hours won't be enough, but we'll try to make it no, work. No, but, but so long as they get away from the whole uh, uh, Stockholm Syndrome with Dexter Loomis stuff with the way and the kidnappings and abductions, and I, I'm not I'm not crazy about that. I, I don't but like, like – But he's a good guy. And, I don't yeah. like that Indy Hartwell thinks Dexter Loomis is hot. That does not fill yeah. me with all kinds of promise. Yeah, exactly. I don't like anything they're doing with the Loomis character right now. There you go. There, there's it's, your there's just, your crossover right there. Gargano and Theory become the tag team champions on one show. Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell become tag team champions on the other show. And, and they're that's how they and uh, they're tag teaming the two shows. A, yeah, and, that, and they'll support each other. Well, no, yeah. hey, it's a great joke, but it's true. They could they could be all on both shows together because two's on one, two's on the other. So you get them on both shows, and it's not an, an overburden or, or too much. Because you're not like the, the focus is only on two of the four each time, so there's always that point of supporting the others, but you know they're not all on the same show. Now, my question is though, and it sort of ties into real life as well, because the one thing we heard like two or three weeks ago is that NXT, and I swear, I swear, that I wish there was a way to prove this, because I've been writing this for a lot longer than two weeks, as you can attest yeah. to. Uh, about two weeks ago, there was the rumor that Evolve is going to be reopened as an NXT sort of sub show. Yeah, uh, that we have heard. So. We have heard that, and we also have heard just today, actually, was the first time I heard it, that NXT is moving to Tuesdays. Now, I have my minor show moving to Tuesdays in this fantasy booking situation. I want to ask you, on, 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 on the real tip for a second here, just your opinion. Yeah. If NXT moves, whether it's my v- fantasy booked lights out show or it's just legitimate NXT as we know it now, if it does move to Tuesday, how long before you get like the little mutants on Twitter that are like, oh my god, they only move to Tuesday to fuck with Dark, they only move to Tuesday to fuck with Impact, they only move to Tuesday to fuck with that sitcom that I like that was canceled 20 years ago. Yeah, right, right away. We're gonna we're already starting to hear that now. Them saying like, oh, they lost the war. They're just going after Impact now because they can at least beat their numbers. <laughs> oh, they know they can beat Impact, so they can that now they can brag they're beat. You know, they're the best watch show on Tuesday because they're beating Impact, and Impact can't you know compare and. But there's no, there's no. Impact. What I find, what I find so hilarious about that too, right? And I do think the. It has the, to do with hockey and the USA Network, really, which we knew for a while, but. And it'll be funny because we just got it, like Sportsnet in Canada just got it. So if they move it to Tuesdays on USA Network now, and I still have to wait till Wednesdays now, and we're still a step behind, I'm going to be pissed. But like, AEW Dark is on YouTube. Impact is on Twitch, and that's I'm not digging either one of those shows. I'm just and saying. And Access TV, so they and, are on cable essentially. But. And Access TV, but I think the majority of people that watch it access it through Twitch, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, yes. Most so, people watch through Twitch or the the YouTube upload afterwards. So what I'm saying is, you got one live stream happening on YouTube, one live stream happening on Twitch, and NXT that's going to be on regular everyday TV. So where's your metric to even do a a Tuesday night war? Like there's no measurable metric to do that with, because yeah, that, that's, yeah because there's there's no way because it wouldn't be unless they were all online or all on cable. 
Yeah, because, I mean, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but when we talk about the the ratings for, like, the Wednesday Night War and all that, it's the Nielsen ratings, which are just American, right? Yeah, just in the United States. Guess what? I, Guess what? The Internet is everywhere. <laughs> well, that's the thing. That's why I always say people go nuts, and I report on the ratings all the time, but, but there's so much more to it than just the Nielsen ratings. That's just the makeup and representing of... of you know, a specific subsect of the audience, and then they're guesstimating the rest. They, there could be more viewers, and then you're not counting. It, it's it's not a great way to do it anymore as mm-hmm. to where, you know, network and cable television years ago was king. We know that people access media in so many different ways now. So Something that I played around with while I was putting this all, all this idea together, just as, as far as a fans, it, it, it wouldn't be a good business practice. And it wouldn't be good uh, business for the TV network, but I'm talking about strictly in a fan service perspective. I was trying to work out some sort of deal where uh, the minor show, the Lights Out show, uh, only being 90 minutes, it would offer the first 45 minutes of the 90 minutes would also simulcast on YouTube or something similar to YouTube, something universally acceptable to get people to tune in to the actual channel. But I was just like, there's something there. There's something there, like the old the old way that they used to put um, pay-per-view kickoffs on TV to wet your whistle to get you to buy into the rest of the show. I thought you could do a YouTube version of that to get people to buy into the weekly yeah. show, uh, but I but and I couldn't figure my really? head I couldn't figure my head around it entirely because no way a TV network is going to include in their deal that yeah you're selling us your product but yeah sure throw it on YouTube at the same time and compete with us essentially i don't think a tv network's going to go for that and i don't think wwe is going to give too much away but no, if you could not. if you could get out of that business head everybody has youtube like or everybody at least has access to youtube if it takes giving away 45 minutes of wrestling it's not like you're giving away your main event unless you put your main event on first or do something weird but like think about yeah, how many exactly. people think about how many people would buy wrestlemania if you threw the first 30 yeah. minutes of wrestlemania on twitter Oh, I know, because people often, like, there's even times where I've owned movies and still rented them on, on my DVR because it's easier access than finding the DVD, you know? Of course. Out of pure laziness. People have done that. If, if you give people a chance and the option to do it legally and, and pay for it, they will. So, I mean, honestly, that's that's uh, pretty much how it works. If you give people that that fundamental, you know, chance to do things the right way, they'll go ahead. And, you yeah. know, so any little incentive you give them to buy... They usually go ahead and do so. But I'm surprised. I'm decent about it, but the cable networks aren't. So. Yeah, but I'm surprised. Like, it's funny that like WWE and the TV network at the same time could have that short-sighted not seeing the forest for the trees. Yeah, go out there and be a drug dealer. Give the first one for free, and they'll come back for more. Like that is still a thing. You know, it worked for cigarettes. It works for religion. It could work for wrestling. That was a shitty comparison. Anyways, I know you got to go because you're in really, really high demand. Um, quickly, do you have anything else to say about this? If not, tell people where to find you. No, you can always find me on the Joe Cronin Show. We uh, review Raw, AEW, sometimes SmackDown, and of course uh, all the pay per views live. You can catch me there and on Twitter at Countdown Ended. And I'll be on the uh, Jabroni Jabber podcast again. So uh, thanks to them for checking me out as well. And thank you, Spaz, as always, for having me. And I really hope somebody listens to these ideas because these were fantastic and certainly some great ways to, you know, save NXT. Hopefully they go ahead and incorporate something. That'd be great. I was going to say, this has been very interesting because you, you, I've been very vocal about how you're my walking encyclopedia on here. This is the first podcast I've had you on where you literally didn't know what we were going to talk about. <laughs> Exactly. Anyways, and you guys know where to find me, or you wouldn't be here. I've been Spaz, he's been Jake, we are your NXT reality check this time around. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation, keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger, I will talk to each and every last one of you later, but for right now, me and super sexy Jake DeMarco are out of here. Bye guys.